Hello, I'm standing here in the middle of the median strip here on Dolores Street, checking out the turf in this area that's planted between all these big old palm trees. So you look down and see over here, there's bunches of grasses. And the question is, what happens if you don't mow the grass? You miss a week or two weeks or three weeks. What does the grass do? So what is this stuff waving in the wind? That's the question. Checking out this little median strip of turf. Let's take a look down below. Mainly it's the grasses, but there's a whole bunch of other plants that are in here too. So let's see how many you can find and identify. You got this one here with the yellow flowers and the globular ball of seeds to right. A little pink thing flowered thing with the little leaves of three little yellow flowers coming in this way looks kind of like a dandelion but a little bit more rounded the leaves aren't so shiny a little bit more pokey there's some places you just don't want to use turf anymore because turf you know mowing the lawn fertilizing it watering and stuff it just takes too much time too much work you're looking for some kind of alternative that is drought tolerant, that you can step on, that the weeds don't come in on easily, that looks more or less good all year round. So we're looking at some hardy ground covers. So this here I'm sitting on a patch of one. This is one of the two couple alternatives I'll show you that seem to well work for uh, work well for us here in San Francisco, the General Bay Area, and probably beyond. So this here is Daimondia margaritaceae. Silvery green and with the nice yellow flowers. Very drought tolerant, tight weave, keeps most of the weeds out. And you can step on it besides. I'm sitting out here in front of the lawn from our department. It's the same lawn we go ahead and mow every week with our maintenance class. For the most part, all the grass here is the cool season grass. It's a fescue. The lawn mixed in with all this cool season fescue is a number of other plants whether they come in by themselves or as part of their original saw that was installed don't know but we once you mow it down though it gives it a uniformity and it's real pretty uh, all green edge the sides no problems in the interior i'm going to show you a, some of the other plants that are all mixed up in here so you can get a breadth of the diversity of turf sometimes people want real purebred turf and that we'll see that in the golf courses maybe in the putting greens around here most of the grasses are pretty lush a little bit mixed up, so to speak. So i just give you a little small animal's view as we walk through this grass, this fescue field. Right in front here, a little bit of English daisy. You can see a little round leaves, good for making daisy chains. Come upon this way, you see those clovers. That used to be real common in all the turf mixtures until they figured it was a weed and didn't want it no more. But in the old times, the farmers, they loved that because it's a cover crop. It gives nitrogen, puts it back in the soil. Like some dandelions to blow right here. Good for making coffee. The root is. Maybe some dandelion wine. And over here you come across a bunch of mosses. So this here turf is growing on the north side. Gets real wet and shady, a little bit moist. Probably will like it sunnier than this. But it is what it is. And down in the middle of the moss, some south thistle. This here cutie with a little purple and white flowers, that's a Veronica. Along with some drop seed there of the dandelion. There's cute little Veronica again. And this here you can see building up is some thatch. That's that all dead stuff in there. As it accumulates, kind of ruins the turf a little bit disease starts popping up so what you gotta do is go in there time to time rake it out clean it out dethatch it then it brings health back to the roots all over again like that this here didn't want to forget to show you my good little old buddy plantain stuck here in the turf also friend of Metamucil and for anybody that's constipated Whew, this is your lifesaver. Little black seeds full of mucilage. This here I'm sitting on a carpet full of cake weed. And 
In this case, it works great as a long alternative, as a turn of alternative. It don't need much watering. It don't mind the strong west facing slope that gets the full brunt of these onshore winds all day long. And it flowers beautifully, the yellow flowers. So yes, it's a weed, came in by itself, but it's made itself at home here and it does reasonably well. In terms of the design and the maintenance regime that can be offered, it works excellent. If your town is anything like ours, it seems like these days we put in a lot more artificial turf fields than ever before. Uh, we used to play in these fields, Golden Gate Park over there. You get there and it's all damp and all wet. And the geese have been there, Canadian geese, and those goose poo all over the place. And the kids be running, the ball would be like so slow, and there'd be all these govets and divots and all over the place, ball run real snow. Nowadays, when we get these artificial turf fields, it's way better. It's even, uh, you can play all year round, turn on the lights at night, all the time people can play out here. And it's great, it's quite an improvement. As a gardener, work out here on the fields, the maintenance isn't too bad. You don't got to keep it water, you don't got to keep it mowed, you don't got to fence off the area when it's wet to keep it from playing. You got good drainage and rocks and gravel all down underneath, and it seems to last for a long time because it's made of plastic. But the only thing is this sometimes you know you've been running on the fields and like the natural earth has a bounce to it, but this, it usually doesn't. So to give it the balance, they put in all these little bits of black rubber all over the place. You gotta kind of drag it around so it's all even and it jumps so it gives it a nice natural cushioniness. It seems to get in the shoes so the kid come home with the soccer shoes, takes the soccer shoes off, little bits of black rubber all over the place. And if you're looking over that way, not a couple blocks away, that's the ocean. And you're kind of thinking, if you're a dolphin, if you're a sea mammal, if you're a seal, if you're a fish, and you got all those little bits of black rubber coming straight, washing out into the ocean time to time, you got to be thinking, what are those people doing? So hopefully somewhere in between we find a happy medium where people can be active and we find some solutions to these ecological problems that a gardener encounters. I'm sitting here on this patch of nice fescue grass that they had done probably saw it not too long ago because the install was just uh, recently. But you can already see in some places uh, the grass is starting to make its way in here. Whether it was the dirt was scratched away, it got stressed out, there was an open patch and boom, in it comes. So here it is. It's a little annual grass called Poa annual. And this time of the year you can see it's real different coloration than the fescue grass that surrounds it. So what do you do in this case? Do you try and spray it out, control it, dig it up? Or you just kind of let the grass over time get all mixed up and do its own thing? What do you do as a plant manager, as a gardener? 